Hi there, welcome to Fluffy Jellyfish. In today's video, we're gonna be giving Gamora a cage upgrade. Gamora is my praying mantis and she is part of the giant rainforest mantis family. She is a Hirojula Majuscula. Well, I'm sorry if I butchered the pronunciation of that. I'll write it up on screen so you know what I was actually trying to say. So Gamora's enclosure at the moment is probably a little bit too small. I mean, it meets the minimum size guidelines, but I noticed that she's quite active in there and I really want to give her more space to explore, so we're going to be upgrading it to something a lot bigger. If you're a returning subscriber, hi, welcome back, I'm so glad you're here. And if you're new to this channel, hi and welcome, my name is Chloe and I am an animal lover. This YouTube is basically dedicated to my animal learning journey as I am sort of in the start of my career with animals. Well, I hope to be just the starting point for a whole future with animals. So if you want to follow that journey with me and see lots more videos about animals, then please hit the subscribe button below. Right, let's get on with this video. In this clip, you can see Gamora's original enclosure and it's the enclosure that I got when I first bought her. It is a suitable size for her, it's over three times her height and two times her width, which is the general recommended guidelines for a mantis. And while it would do her for her whole adult life, I noticed when she last molted into her adult form that of course she was a lot bigger, but also she became a lot more active. And I figured out that that was quite indicative of her species. They tend to be a lot more active when they're, they're adults, so I wanted to upgrade her into something a lot bigger so she had a lot more space to roam about. And I think it's important to give your animals the best life that you can, so that's why I chose to upgrade her enclosure into this bigger, this bigger one. Um, and I happened to be really lucky and passed by a garden centre when they were doing a sale, so I managed to get a great bargain on this Exoterra. So that made everything a lot more worthwhile. And as you can see, when you compare the two enclosures together, there's obviously a huge size difference. And in this new Exoterra, which is the mini tall, she will be able to explore a huge amount and there is so much space for her to walk in. I also found with my old enclosure that it was basically rubbish. The side of it cracked not that long after I bought it, so I put that down to being my fault but I think it was just a bit of a flimsy design to be honest because it cracked in another place as well. And the door of it became unstuck so I ended up having to stick it with sellotape most of the time which was a bit of a pain so for that reason as well I'm excited to upgrade to something like the Exoterra. There are loads of things I really like about the Exoterra brand and if I if all my enclosures in the future can be Exoterras that would be fantastic because they're really sturdy cages, they're built to last and the quality of them just is yeah a lot better than a lot of the other ones that I've experienced. <laughs> By the way, not sponsored by Exoterra, which I was, but I just really like them. As you can see, this has perfect ventilation on the top and the sides, and the front opening doors are a real draw for enclosures like this. I find the sort of aquarium style ones where you have to open them from the top are a little bit harder to get into and sometimes can scare your animals as well when you're coming in at them from the top. And with the mantis it just would be uh, not as great because they, they obviously hang upside down on the top and if you had to keep opening it from the top they'd get a little bit disturbed every time you went in. So I really like this, it's got front opening doors. The great thing as well about the Exoterras is you can customise them with all the other features that they have and upgrade with all the other equipment that they have. So if I ever did want to use this enclosure in the future for a different kind of animal, I could quite easily upgrade it to fit another type of animal and use any of their equipment to upgrade my enclosure. So I'm a little bit annoyed that this residue is here on the glass from the piece of tape that was keeping the doors shut, but I will remove that. And here's a little clip of me opening the doors for um, anyone like me that has never opened an Exoterra before and couldn't figure out how to do it so I had to google it. Yeah, I know, not, not my brightest moment, but I managed, so hopefully you'll learn something from this if you've never opened an Exoterra before. <laughs> so that's the thumbs up for me on the door opening. So again, as I said, I'm a little bit annoyed that this residue is there and Exoterra, if you're watching this, I think you should invest in some tape that doesn't leave a residue because it is a little bit of a pain having to remove this. But it was easy enough to do. I used some acetone or a nail polish remover to get it off. It took a little bit of scrubbing and I was a little bit worried at one point that it wasn't going to come off, but it did. And I cleaned the rest of my glass with water. To get rid of the acetone. So it worked in the end but it was a little extra step that I didn't think I was going to have to do and a little bit annoying but you know we got there in the end. 
now that my glass is all clean, it's time to set up the enclosure. So the first step for me is to remove everything from Gamora's enclosure. And as you can see, I'm slightly tapping everything that I take out because there are springtails in my enclosure and I want to save them all and I don't want them to escape. So I'm popping everything inside this bucket so everything from my enclosure can be saved. It was a little bit difficult to get out my drainage layer and the eco earth that was already in there, but I did eventually manage to get it all out and I'm pretty sure I managed to save all of the springtails while I was doing so. Next step was to pour in the clay balls that were already in my enclosure because there were some springtails floating around in the bottom and I did want to make sure that they all got in there and I obviously didn't want to waste the clay balls that were already in there as they're still good. So I very carefully tipped them into my enclosure and as you can see I decided just to keep the piece of foam background that was in there already. It's not the best but I'll use it for now and I quite like it and it'll provide something for Gamora to climb on as well as I think she'll be able to hook her little feet into the um, into the foam. So I, I'm just giving my enclosure a good tap to make sure all the springtails are out there before I clean it off because I don't want to kill any. Tap tap tap. So the next step is to pop in the clay balls and I'm using Hydro Balls by Zoomed. These will provide my drainage layer for the enclosure and I'm doing it about one ball thick if that makes sense so it's quite a thin layer. It's just enough to provide an adequate drainage layer for this enclosure as there won't be that much substrate. It's just enough to keep in the moisture as obviously Gamora is a arboreal creature and she will be spending most of her time up towards the top of the enclosure. This is just enough to provide an adequate drainage layer so no water sits at the bottom or becomes mouldy or stagnant. So the next layer of drainage on top of my clay balls is a layer of mesh and that basically just stops the substrate that I'm using from mixing with the drainage layer and basically it keeps it working because if it mixed with the drainage layer it would no longer be a drainage layer, it would just be a pile of substrate. So the next step is to add my substrate on top of the mesh and I'm using this cocoa brick from ProRep which is basically coconut fibres and I've been hydrating it in this pot. <laughs> Please ignore the pot. I couldn't find anything else to pop it in. I didn't cook it, it just happens to be a pot. Basically when you hydrate it, it turns into a sort of soil and I'm using this as my substrate for Gamora because she requires quite a high humidity and it holds in moisture really well. It also provides a great home for my springtails which I'm using as my cleanup crew. And they will eat any waste that Gamora drops as well as her poop. Enjoy this little time lapse of me adding in the substrate. On top of this I added the substrate that I already had in Gamora's enclosure as this contained the majority of my springtails. It also has sphagnum moss in it so I mixed that in as well and I tipped in the rest of it to make sure that all the springtails got into it through the top. <laughs> and then I went away to wash my hands because they got dirty. <laughs> So I took the lid off the top and I just gave the tub a really good smack to make sure all the springtails were out of it. After ensuring every last springtail was out of my container, I added in a layer of sphagnum moss. I've hi been hydrating it in this tub for a while and it's live moss from ProRep. Everything that I'm using in this video by the way will be linked in the description down below. So if you want to use anything in your own build, do check out the links below. This layer of moss basically provides extra hydration and more moisture so it's easier for me to add humidity into my enclosure. So now comes the fun bit, it's decorating time. I am using fake plants in this enclosure, one from her old enclosure and one new larger one. I'm using fake plants rather than real plants. Blah, blah, blah. I'm using fake plants rather than real plants because I really don't have a green thumb. I'm not that great at taking care of plants and while I do want to get better I'm sticking to pot plants for now rather than going fully bioactive because at least in the pots I can control what I'm doing and try and learn before embarking on a bioactive enclosure. So I'm also adding a lot of sticks into this enclosure for Gamora to climb on. I just collected these from my garden and I 
baked them in the oven to ensure that they were safe. To ensure that they were sterilized and safe. So, so I just played around for a while trying to get the best looking closure that I could and trying to overlap all the sticks so she could easily climb from one to the other. And to finish off, I'm going to spray down the enclosure and mist it with my little spray bottle to make it nice and humid for her to go back in. Spritz, spritz, spritz. Oh, of course, better not forget to put the lid on. <laughs> That's important. So here it is, the final enclosure, all finished. I'll take you a little bit closer so you can see everything that I've done inside. I'm really pleased with it. I think it's turned out really well. It's pretty basic and you know, quite a simple enclosure, but I think I've done a pretty good job, and and I plan to add to it into the, 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 the I plan to add to it in the future, and maybe even go fully bioactive and add some live plants and maybe landscape a background. But for now, I'm pretty proud of what I've done, and I think it's turned out really well. So time to introduce the little lady back into it. This is Gamora. Isn't she lovely? I really love her. I'm a little bit sad that mantises don't live very long, as I know that I don't have that long left with her. But hopefully she's still got a good few months left in her. Isn't she stunning? My little green lady. Defender of the galaxy. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Defender of her own little galaxy. She's giving me the side eye. Come on then, little lady, into your enclosure. Let's see what you think. Oh no, focus. Ah, focus. Sorry, you're just gonna have to enjoy this blurry clip of Glamora going in until I figure out that my camera wasn't actually in focus. Here are some better clips. She's cleaning off her hands because she touched a dirty human. Lem, 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 lem. Lick, lick, lick. This is how mantises drink. Normally in the wild it would be from leaves, but in captivity it's from the side of her enclosure on the glass. I love watching her little mouth pieces go. They're so weird. She is such an alien looking creature. She's doing me a dance. I forgot to mention that I also added in an Exoterra hygrometer and thermometer, as you can see in the background just now. Gamora is kindly standing in front. <laughs> The thermometer is on the other side. The one that you can see just now is the hygrometer. Gamora seems to be settling in really well to her new enclosure and I'm really glad I made the decision to upgrade because she's been exploring a lot and walking around a lot and I'm really glad that she's got the extra space to do that in. I really enjoyed putting this together and I'm pretty proud of how it turned out and she really seems to like it too. So I hope you enjoyed watching this cage upgrade as much as I enjoyed putting it together and as much as Gamora is enjoying exploring it right now. <laughs> Sorry, I keep looking up because I can see her. <laughs> she's wandering about and she's right at the top of the enclosure at the moment. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. And if you like this, please hit the thumbs up. And I'd love to hear your comments and let me know your thoughts on what you think about my enclosure. If you think I did a good job or a bad job, <laughs> maybe keep those opinions to yourself. I don't want to know. No, I do want to know. If you've got any tips for me, I'd really love to hear them. Please share them in the comments below. And please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already to check out more videos like this in the future. That's all for now. Fluffy jellyfish out.